whenever you guys are ready, can you tell me about what we're looking at? Yeah, so this is a uh, kind of sound to sight visualizer, and the goal was to um, be able to change the colors on the screen using different notes. So as new notes are played, um, we have like colors kind of go off. And how it does that is it calculates the intervals between a new note and the previous note, and it uses a, a log calculation used called a sense, which um, calculates the interval, and then that is associated with three different colors. So we associated, um, there are 13 possible intervals, um, and four of them create a green color, five of them create a blue color, and four create a red color. And so as new notes are played, it will either um, splash uh, kind of a blue, green, and red. Uh, and on top of that, it creates, over the past 20 notes in the song that's being played, it uh, calculates the overall like mood, quote unquote, mm. which is the average color of all the previous 20 intervals. And it will recalculate, re recalculate that every 20 notes. And can I just add, when you, when you say intervals, do you mean the frequency interval between two notes being played simultaneously, or is interval like a time interval? Yeah, it's the, the frequency interval between uh, the two notes. Okay. Um, Okay. So it's a, it's a ratio of the two frequencies together, which then calculates to an interval in musical terms. And are you choosing the two sort of loudest frequencies? Yeah, so we actually choose, so we can choose the three loudest frequencies. Um, and we use a, an FFT to um, find all the frequencies that are being played and it then goes through a loop which goes through each frequency and calculates the three largest magnitudes. And depending on, we have a minimum amplitude of 1.5, and if the amplitude of the frequency is greater than that, then it will register that a new note is being played. Okay. Um, and then we'll calculate uh, if, if each, there's a percent difference, so if three notes are being played, but two of them are much smaller in amplitude than the largest note, um, then those two won't be accounted for in the calculations. Um, okay. And, so. Cool. Right. So this animation, uh, it's running uh, the boy's algorithm under the hood with a predator, and uh, when a new note is detected, a predator will turn on and color the boys around it with the... Uh, um, based on the interval analysis that uh, Rafi just described. And then, um, so that's, so each boy would have a color attribute. And then to make uh, this animation, uh, we split the screen into tiles, and then each boy will map to uh, a tile on the screen. And then the tile's color will either be the overall mood, if there's no boys in it, or an average of all the uh, boys inside of it. And um, right now there's no sound playing, so it's mostly, uh, the default mood. But so sort of like, do I have a correct mental model that almost like behind this we could imagine Boyd's flocking? Yeah. And then you're colorizing the tiles based on the proximity of those Boyd's to predators that are added to the simulation as notes appear? Or um, We're coloring the tiles based on uh, the, uh, the colors of the Boyd's that are moving around. So... Uh, you can see a, a hint of it here, yeah. um, and the pre once the uh, a predator will like activate, like they're moving around always, but they're only they will only affect the boys once uh, a new note is played, and then upon which the 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 boys being affected by the predator will change their color relative to the new okay. note. Okay. Okay. And okay. We have a we have a range. So if the Boyd ha can see the predator within its range, then it will change to the color of that predator. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So you see like a kind of a scattering effect as the notes are being Cool, played. okay. Yeah. Should we play the song? Sure. So what happens is, so this is behind the hood, yeah. essentially. There's a predator moving, um, which is then lighting up the 
the voids around it. Yeah. And gradually, um, the voids always tend to go back to the overall mood. Um, so the colors over time will change back to like currently the overall mood is this like dark blue. blue. Yeah. And so the colors turn towards that um, every 15 degrees. Okay. Found that uh, the visualization like works a lot better with slower piano. Okay. Where there's like kind of sharper um, distinguishing notes between each other. Frequency discriminations may be a little yeah. more obvious. Yeah. Okay. So now the mood's green. So, how I did it originally was uh, for those who know musical terms. Uh, the intervals that are green are sound, uh, they have more of their major mm. intervals. So, like a, a unison note, a major third, a perfect fourth, and a perfect fifth are all major notes. Um, some of the others are then the blue colors that happen are more minor, so like a, a minor second or a minor third. Uh, a minor sixth in those uh, and then the red notes are kind of more dissonant um, so like a minor seventh or a diminished seventh sure or turn red so now these are sort of minor chords and it's coming up bluish yeah very interesting and can you so from a hardware perspective can you talk through some of the components here so you have a microphone yeah and then how can you explain sort of the various bits and bobs that are apparent here on the breadboard yeah so we implemented using 8-bit color um, onto the VGA screen which just increases the the color range we can have on the screen so it has a it can go from we can input a degree that's mm -hmm. zero to 360 with zero being, and 360 being red, 120 being green, 240 being blue, and then you can kind of get all the colors in between. Um, and then how we connected to uh, the microphone was we have a audio socket, uh, just a regular 3.5 mm -hmm. millimeter audio socket, which then con connects to an interface, um, connected to my computer, which just powers it on, uh, hooked up to a driver on the computer and allows the mic to run. And it inputs into the controller, which then outputs to the Pico through an audio socket. And then you sample it with the ADC? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the tending to a color that you described earlier was on the HSV 360 uh, like color wheel, it would tend towards the overall mode by 15 degrees. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the increment that it would move along the wheels. Really interesting. Awesome. Thank you. That's very cool. <laughs> 